You've been fasting for weeks, maybe months. You skip breakfast, you watch the clock, you push through hunger, and you tell yourself, this is what discipline looks like. But when you look in the mirror, nothing really changes. Or worse, you feel more tired, more irritable, more confused than before. And quietly, a dangerous thought creeps in. Maybe I'm just bad at this. Here's the uncomfortable truth most fasting videos won't tell you. If fasting isn't working for your body, it's not neutral. You might be unknowingly raising your blood sugar, stressing your hormones, losing lean muscle, and blaming yourself for something that isn't a willpower problem at all. Right now, the internet is split between two camps. One says 16 hours is enough. The other insists, oh mad, one meal a day. 23 hours of fasting is the fastest path to fat loss, mental clarity, even longevity. Both sound convincing. Both use science. And both can fail you depending on how your body responds. This video isn't here to tell you which method is harder or more impressive. It's here to show you what actually happens inside your body when you fast and why choosing the wrong approach can quietly work against you. If you've ever felt stuck, frustrated, or secretly exhausted by fasting, stay with me. What you're about to hear may change how you see your body entirely. Most people believe fat loss is about calories. Eat less, move more, and fat disappears. But your body doesn't work on math. It works on signals, and the strongest signal it responds to is insulin. Insulin isn't the villain it's often made out to be. It's simply your body's way of saying, food has arrived. Every time you eat, especially carbohydrates or sugar, glucose enters your bloodstream. In response, your pancreas releases insulin to move that glucose into your cells. This process is essential for survival. But here's the part that matters. When insulin is elevated, your body cannot burn fat. It is biologically locked into storage mode. Think of your fat cells like a vault. As long as insulin is high, that vault stays sealed. No matter how motivated you are, no matter how disciplined you feel, fat cannot leave. Only when insulin drops low enough does the lock finally open. And that doesn't happen just because you skipped a snack. It requires time without food. At first, your body doesn't burn fat. It burns stored sugar, known as glycogen, primarily kept in the liver. That supply is limited roughly enough energy for a brisk morning walk or a short jog. Once glycogen begins to run out, usually after 10 to 14 hours without eating, something important shifts. This is what researchers call the metabolic switch. Your body transitions from running on glucose to running on fat. Fat cells release fatty acids into the bloodstream, and your liver converts them into ketones, a clean, stable fuel your brain and body can thrive on. Fasting only works when this switch is flipped, and that's why time matters more than effort. Once that metabolic switch flips, something unexpected happens not in your body, but in your mind. Hunger doesn't make your brain weaker. It can actually make it sharper. When glucose runs low and ketones rise, your brain shifts to a more stable fuel source. Ketones don't spike and crash like sugar. They burn slowly, cleanly, and consistently. This is why many people report a sudden sense of clarity during deeper fasting. Thoughts feel quieter. Focus lasts longer. Mood feels more even. This isn't psychological hype. It's biology. During fasting, your brain increases the production of BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Think of BDNF as fertilizer for your neurons. It supports memory, learning, emotional regulation, and the growth of new neural connections. From an evolutionary perspective, this makes perfect sense. Our ancestors often went long periods without food. If hunger made their minds foggy or panicked, they wouldn't survive. Instead, the human brain evolved to become more alert during scarcity. Fasting didn't slow us down. It tuned us in. But here's the detail most people miss. This mental shift doesn't happen just because you're uncomfortable or skipping meals. It only happens after your body has fully transitioned away from glucose and into fat and ketone metabolism. And that transition depends on how long insulin stays low, not how hard you try. This is where different fasting methods begin to separate, 
not by labels, but by how long your body actually stays in this state. 16-8 fasting isn't just about skipping breakfast, it's a daily biological rhythm, a quiet, repeatable pattern that allows your body to step out of storage mode and return to fat burning, without shock, without extremes. After your last meal of the day, insulin remains elevated for several hours. During that time, your body prefers to burn glucose from your bloodstream and glycogen from your liver. But as the hours pass and food stays absent, insulin gradually falls. Around 10 to 14 hours in, the metabolic switch begins to turn. Fat cells unlock, fatty acids are released, and ketones start to rise. With a 16 to 8 schedule, most people spend 2 to 6 hours each day in this fat-burning, ketone-supported state. It may not sound dramatic, but this daily repetition is where the real power lies. Over time, insulin sensitivity improves, blood sugar becomes more stable, your body gets better at switching fuels instead of clinging to sugar. Another misconception worth clearing up is muscle loss. Fasting does not automatically burn muscle. In fact, short daily fasts increase growth hormone which helps preserve lean tissue while signaling the body to use fat for fuel. This is why many active adults and gym goers use 16 to 8 to reduce body fat while maintaining strength. And then there's real life. 16 8 fits into normal routines. Lunch at noon. Dinner by 7 or 8. Family meals stay intact. Social life doesn't collapse. Sleep often improves because digestion isn't competing with rest hormones late at night. But 16 to 8 isn't perfect. If meals are heavy in sugar or ultra-processed foods, insulin may never drop low enough. And if overeating fills the entire eating window, the benefits quietly disappear. Fasting supports your biology. It doesn't override it. Oh, mad, one meal a day sounds simple. Fast for 23 hours, eat once, and let fat melt away. And in some ways, it does exactly what people promise. After such a long fast, glycogen is fully depleted, ketone levels rise high, fat burning becomes dominant. Many people feel sharp, focused, even euphoric once their brain adapts. But what rarely gets discussed is what happens when that fast ends. Breaking a 23-hour fast isn't just eating, it's a metabolic shock. You're asking your body to absorb nearly an entire day's calories, protein, fiber, and micronutrients in a very short window. And that creates a powerful insulin surge. After hours of near-zero insulin, your pancreas suddenly has to respond to a massive influx of glucose, amino acids, and fat. This swing from deep fasting to deep feeding creates what researchers describe as hormonal whiplash. In some people, morning blood sugar actually rises higher on OMAD than in those eating three meals a day. Not because OMAD fails, but because the body is still processing last night's meal. Digestive stress is another hidden cost. Bloating, reflux, disrupted sleep, and gut discomfort are common when the digestive system is overloaded all at once. Hitting adequate protein, potassium, magnesium, B vitamins, and fiber in one sitting is also surprisingly difficult. Over time, nutrient gaps can appear quietly, this is why OMAD isn't a beginner tool. It demands metabolic flexibility, careful food choices, and lifestyle alignment. For experienced fasters under medical supervision, OMAD can break plateaus and trigger deeper autophagy. But for many others, it becomes a cycle of daytime restraint followed by nighttime overload. OMAD isn't wrong. It's just not neutral. And whether it helps or harms depends entirely on who you are, how you eat, and where your body is right now. Here's where most fasting advice goes wrong. It treats the human body like a template, not a living system, but your hormones, stress levels, sleep quality, age, and daily demands all shape how fasting affects you. That's why the right method isn't the most extreme one. It's the one your body can adapt to without pushing back. If you're coming from years of eating three to five times a day, 16-8 is often the safest and most effective place to start. It allows your insulin to fall gradually. It teaches your body how to burn fat without overwhelming your digestion or nervous system. 
For most people, this alone improves metabolic health, energy, and mental clarity within weeks. OMAD, on the other hand, should never be a starting point. It's better suited for those who already have stable blood sugar, good metabolic flexibility, and experience with fasting. Even then, it works best as a targeted tool, not a daily lifestyle. Certain groups should avoid OMAD entirely pregnant or breastfeeding women, individuals with a history of disordered eating, those with low blood pressure, type 1 diabetes, or anyone taking medications that affect glucose regulation. Fasting isn't a test of toughness. It's a biological tool. Used at the wrong time, it can raise cortisol, disrupt sleep, and create cycles of fatigue and food obsession. Used wisely, it restores balance. The difference isn't discipline. It's alignment. Somewhere along the way, fasting turned into a competition. Longer hours, more restraint, more suffering. But health was never meant to feel like a constant battle with your own body. When fasting is done right, it doesn't feel punishing. It feels quiet, stable, almost peaceful. You don't need to fast for 23 hours to deserve results. You don't need perfect discipline or flawless execution. What matters is how your body responds after a week, not how impressive your routine looks online. Are you sleeping better? Is your energy steadier? Do you feel calmer around food instead of tense and reactive? These signals matter more than any fasting window. If life feels overwhelming, adding more restriction won't heal you. If you're already exhausted, fasting harder isn't the solution. Sometimes the most metabolic progress comes from doing less, not more. Eating earlier. Removing late-night snacks. Giving your body consistent rhythms it can trust. Fasting was never meant to disconnect you from hunger or enjoyment. It was meant to reconnect you to your internal signals to help you feel when you're truly hungry, when you're satisfied, and when your body needs rest instead of control. The healthiest fasting plan isn't the one that burns the most fat the fastest. It's the one that lets you wake up clear-headed, sleep deeply, and live without being at war with yourself. If this helped you understand your body a little better today, stay with us. We're learning, adjusting, and improving together, one intentional choice at a time.